started the recording and we can look to just hop into it unless you had other questions before we started. Okay. All right. Then for YouTube, just as a reminder for those of you who are new, just I'll, I'll be a minute or so while I'm looking for something to talk about. Okay. Just remembering that whenever nobody needs healing, that we're reloading, right? That way we have actually ammo for when people do need healing, right? Every single person on our team is full HP right now, so but we're stuck at 4 ammo. If they dived in right now this instant, we would only have 4 ammo to heal people up, and then we'd be forced to reload when somebody's, like, in the middle of dying, right? So right. just good reload habits to get into. Also, watch the overhealing again. Just make sure you're paying attention to health bars, right? Same thing applies on, you know, Ana. Same thing applies on... Um, what, what we, we, we want to resent Ana, and then, what was the third? Moria, yep, same thing on Moria, right? We're not mm -hmm. overhealing mm -hmm. when people are full HP. Pay attention to health bars, because if we're doing this, this is wasting time where we could be reloading, we could be shooting mm -hmm. at enemies, we could be looking to reposition ourselves, we could be paying attention to our surroundings, right? We just, it's essentially wasting time and effort and resources when we could mm -hmm. be doing other things. Mm-hmm. All right, so positioning-wise, we're a little bit out of whack here. So um, mm -hmm. perf if we see our whole teams over here. Um, if we're trying to position ourselves, right, um, we don't want to – and, like, we see that they're on a dive, right? So, we're, again, identifying team compositions, right, because team comps dictate play style. They're on, a, they're on a mostly dive comp here, right? So, we just got to be careful about isolating ourselves because the further away we get from our team, the um, easier we're, of a dive target we're going to be. So, preferably here, I'd probably say we want it to be – we want to be more sort of, like, over towards this or maybe even, like, right on top of them. So, this does a couple different things. This means that we're, um, you know, over with the team and they can help us and stop us from getting dove. If, for example – Let's say we got dove this instant. We would have no team support. Monkey drops a bubble on top of us, and nobody can get to us, and therefore we die, right? But being over with our team allows us to better heal them. Them are they are able to support us. On top of that, just in general, Baptiste is like we'll discuss that more more if it if we get into it. But Baptiste usually wants to stick on top of his team anyways, just okay. because that's how uh, most of, most of his kit works. But we'll we'll continue going on like this. So we do rotate to our team just slightly later on in the fight. So, but that's good though. Um, and then we lamp immediately. So again, paying attention to health bars, make sure you're paying attention to, you know, the danger level of people, because I don't think that at this moment, anybody need it. Yeah. I don't think that anybody necessarily needed it. Right. I think we're, yeah, we're the lowest on our team, but you know, we're not in danger. Right. Remember we've, uh, we've discussed this before. It's like, you know, there's a difference between people, someone being low and them being in danger. Um, so just in this instance, you know, nobody really needed that lamp. Nobody dipped below half uh, or anything like that. So in this instance, we just wanted to hold on to it for longer until somebody did need it, right? Because then that's just a wasted ability. So we want to put a lot of thought and effort into it. Right. And again, make sure we're not sitting at three ammo. I think we just need to get into good reload habits, right? Anytime we're not needing healing, we're reloading. So none of these guys need it. Just reload while no, they don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, good job getting out there. I like the jump as well, and then the I like the shift timing. Let's see, what is what's break die here? So break got booped off main. All right, so she just kind of got bursted down. Okay, I'm definitely overhealing. I I feel it when I'm doing it too. Yeah. Yep, and we just want to make sure that we're look, looking to damage a little bit more when we see these guys are all full HP, right? Just looking to right. start shooting at stuff, right? That way we're actually doing more, right? Same thing on Ana, where we're not constantly going pew, 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 heal, like healing, and same thing on Moria, right? It's just kind of the same concept. Um, probably say a little bit less than Moria, right? Uh, Ana is basically healing all the time unless she's looking for abilities, and in, unless something's, like, low, Um and then more is like 50-50 split. I pr probably say Baptiste is a little bit more like 70-30 split. So like 70% of the time you're going to be healing, 30% of the time you're going to be damaging. But right now we're a little bit too much on the healing side, right? Where we're just healing way too much. The other thing I would say is when you know that you're up against a dive, um, we're a pretty good dive target, right? So we can expect them to come towards our us a lot of the time here. And a good way to dodge out a dive is to constantly have a crouch charged up so like be right like right now this instant right if we're expecting maybe like a, a tracer or a monkey to come in on us we could charge up a crouch and then when they dive in on us we just jump up in the air and then now we're out of their reach right yep i'd never do that mm -hmm. 
Yep, which isn't something you need to do up against, you know, a, a brawl or a spam, but it is something you do want to do up against a dive. Um, mm -hmm. And then also depending on, like, what characters they have, you might want to do that pretty frequently um, just to get good angles and whatnot. Um, so, for example, if they have hit scans and snipers then you might want to jump a whole lot less but if they don't then you can jump as often as you want because this gives you a really really good it kind of acts as like a temporary high ground where you can see pretty much everything from where you're at right we jump up in the air we can have very good visibility um it allows us to see everything and shoot at everything and, and throw lamps wherever we want to go and then on top of that it gives us like you know some access to you know, shoot at more things and whatnot. So just just jumping up in the air is just going to be pretty good when you have nothing to contest you. And then in this like the comp that they're in, they don't really have anything to, to contest you if you jumped up, right? Mm -hmm. They have maybe Ana who could snipe you, but usually Ana's not going to be doing that. So you just have to be slightly careful with it. But it, for the most part, it's actually going to be more beneficial for jumping, especially when we're getting dove. Mm -hmm. Here I was having a problem healing the junk mm -hmm. rat up there. This may be a bit better angle. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So um, most of the time when you're trying to heal on Baptiste, you're not attempting to go for body shots. You're attempting to go for um, like floor shots, right? The same way that you, you're looking to hit floors with ananades, right? And not body shots with ananades because it's just, first off, it's, it's, or the, the, basically the only reason is it is very, very much easier to do it when it's hitting the ground because it's a very, it's a larger radius and instead of trying to hit one person who's moving around, right? So um, getting a downwards angle means that even if you miss the junk ride directly, it's, hit, it's hitting the floor or you should probably even be aiming at the floor, right? So you can just jump up if you're trying to heal someone on the high ground. Um, this is as well why high grounds is, uh, act as really good you know, places for you to be standing as well is because we can always constantly have that downward angle and never have to look up at people. Like here, we just be looking to the side on Junkrat, right? So it's just things to consider when you're struggling to hit somebody on a high ground to consider just crouching and jumping up, taking the high ground if you, if you need to, right? There's all different options that you can take. You might not want to start off on the high ground because that might isolate you and make you an easy dive target. And from here, we can't really leap anywhere, right? Like if we... Like if we just left up here, they'd still be able to shoot us. But if we start off on the ground, that baits them to jump us on the ground, and then we can just jump up to the high ground, right? And then now we have a good angle. So that that's just kind of what your strategy might want to be to start off okay. the fight here. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy, he has to keep jumping up. Alright. Reloading. Yep, right now we're just, you know, we're looking for stuff to shoot at. We're not really peeking very much to shoot at things. Yep, Should just, I be just... peeking to shoot? Um, like, I mean, you could, you can take, especially, like, when they have nothing to contest, like we talked about it be, like a, before, when they have nothing to contest you, you can take pretty aggressive angles, right? Like, the, okay. the, they don't have any range. Tracer's not long range, Break's not long range, Zarya's not long range, Monkey's not long range. Um, Echo could only potentially kind of poke you out at a long range. Um, and then... Ana would be really the one that you'd have to be a little bit careful of, um, but like as long as you're careful of it, you could still potentially be killing something. Like if you could, you could just like come over here um, while you know charging up a crouch, and you'd be relatively safe because you have your team here with you. You could uh, like jump up to the high ground if they dive you, right? You, I'm, I'm just saying we want to be actively looking for damage when we when we don't have to heal. Um. Maybe not in need of the shift when we use it. When do, when do we use it here? We we kind of shift when it's not needed. So keep in mind, shift has kind of two purposes, right? It's kind of, think of shift as an Ana heal nade, right? So usually you're not using nade for healing, but think of shift as, you know, it can only be healing. So you're using shift in those situations where you'd use Ana healing. When you are low or when you have a teammate who needs burst healing. So, or just a group of people who need healing, right? So... Okay. Um, if Arissa is in danger, right, and you're trying to burst heal her up, right, shifting and shooting her gets two different heal, heal sources, which means you're healing her up faster than if you're just sh shooting her, right? So mm -hmm. it does burst healing, and that's how we're going to want to look to use it. Here we kind of use it like when we didn't really need healing and our team mm -hmm. didn't really need healing, and then maybe it would have been, you know, better to use just like... Uh, maybe just like a second or two later when the monkey actually jumps you and then now you do need healing because it just came right. a little bit early there maybe again not necessary there um, i guess sigma is is half in critical um 
I guess maybe that's who we're throwing it for, but it didn't necessarily look like we were even, it looked like he's we kind of threw it for like, us. He's nated too, right? Yeah. So I also have a bad habit of healing when somebody's anti mm. Yeah, I don't think we necessarily, we, it looks like we even, we, we threw that even before we saw this thing yeah. was, was anti -ed. So let's see, yeah. like, see, honestly, in this situation, it doesn't really look like, so again, first off, probably should be taking the high ground here. Right, um, yep. would be the best thing to be doing, and that gives us a really good angle to work with. It doesn't really seem like we're we we because we throw that way like when when we glance at Sigma, he was actually full HP. Like right now, he is full HP when we throw ah. this. So when we throw this lamp, pretty much nobody needs it. The other thing to keep in mind is that we're throwing it out in the middle of point. Be very careful of this when we're throwing our lamps. We want to keep the same positioning and cover usage that we would be on ourselves because if we're throwing it on the middle of point on the open, right, Zarya, like all these guys can shoot at it as well as Monkey can. But if we're putting it, for example, right around, if we're trying to, uh, if we're trying to do Sigma, then we can throw it over here. And then now this is, it's up around this corner. If we're putting it over here for us, it's around this corner. And then now it can't be destroyed nearly as easily. And therefore, it stays up the entire duration not just for a couple mm -hmm. seconds so this is you'd only throw it out in the open for an emergency um situation mm -hmm. but preferably um you should also be kind of you know you might be thinking in your head well um what if i just didn't have time to look for a um for a corner, right? What if, what if, it, if somebody was low and I just had to toss it like right then and there? Well, in that case, you want to be pre-looking for, for places to put it, right? You want to, before anybody needs it, right? Before anybody's cr critical or purple or whatever, you're looking around you and going, this is where my team's at. Where's a good spot to lamp, right? So if our team's over in this corner, we can pre-think in our heads. If we get dove here, I'm probably going to lamp here in the corner. If mm -hmm. Sigma's over on, over there, I'm probably going to lamp on that right side corner for him, right? So we're pre-thinking of places to put them, and then therefore we're not panicking, and we have more time to prepare, and it actually ups our reaction times, and are, we're able to make better lamps. I think that I need to change my mindset because I'm starting to realize I'm always doing stuff to be preventative versus mm. using things when I need it. Yeah, so you're looking to... Po just so in case. Just in case, yeah. So just in case, yeah. I definitely would change mm -hmm. that mindset because because lamp okay. isn't a just in case thing. Because you're going to notice here, um, we used it in that just in case situation, and then now monkey ults and boops us out of it. And now you know uh, maybe this is a slightly better situation to use it, right? Because we're getting pinned into a corner by the monkey, um, and sigma is critical and low, right? So in this situation, it might be a little bit necessary. But at this point, now we have three critical people who. It would lamp would be perfectly fine on right. anybody here, but we don't have it, right? Yeah. So, a um, couple of different things there, right? Was just our positioning, um, and then our ability, both of our ability usages. Ability usage so far seeming seeming a little bit on the need to work on, uh, you know, zone where we we want to make sure we're working on those. So particularly, mm -hmm. um, usually shift isn't terrible, like, and it's not the big most important ability. But I would say the lamp is a very, very important ability because it's like the big one of the biggest things on in Bap's kit. It's kind of like a second ult, um, and you need to make sure that you're just using it correctly, right, and not wasting it. Mm -hmm. All right. So we die first there when we probably could have prevented that with better ability usage and positioning, and then that means that we lose the fight, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see how we use our ult here. Now this is going to be a little bit di like difficult of an ult. It's it's a little bit harder to use an ult when you they are on a dive, but um we, we probably don't want to use. We're probably going to use it on the other characters that aren't dive, right? Like because you know it's it could be pretty hard to get a monkey or a tracer with your ult, but you know the other guys who are a lot slower, you could probably set up your ult to kill them. So let's see how right. we use it here. Yeah. We're just reloading here. You know, we, we yeah. don't need to shoot because we because we got our ult already. No need to spam. No need to heal here. So we're just reloading. There's a lot of times where we should just be reloading and we're not. All right. right. So, so skip forwards here. Um, I was very nervous about the monkey. Mm. So I don't think. Uh, yeah. yeah. I felt very awkward in this spot. I... Yeah. I think that you probably would be better off like positioning yourself somewhere like over here again keep in mind that when you're when you're up against a dive the best place for you to be is just always gonna be with your team um as that means that you're you can't you don't isolate yourself so um i think over here would give us if we know they're all going right side this would get a, give us a good line of sight to put a window down for like uh putting it right side over here 
Um, and then on top of that, if, you know, we get dove again, we have the shift to get out of reach, right? So we just, like, for example, here, if we're standing here and we get dove, we just go boop, and now we're up to the high ground, and monkey's cooldown is on five seconds, and transfer can't reach us, right? So we're perfect. We just really have to watch out for him and be ready for him. But um, over here, um, all right, we, we jump, we go up, we hit the seal, or we hit the ceiling, or we just come or like if we're if we're in here we hit the ceiling or if we're out here we just you know jump up and then we come straight back down and then monkey and tracer kill us right um mm -hmm. it doesn't it, it's still better than you know sitting still here but it's not as good as if we were jumping up to a high ground right um so positioning over here is going to give us better angles and give us a high ground to jump to and is a little bit closer to our orissa right and we have our team to back us up so um that's just where we should be i actually opened my settings for some somehow all right Okay, nothing's happening at the moment. I, I can never remember, so forgive me if I've asked this before, because mm -hmm. I always forget these things. Um, on your team, because I know we talked about it last time, but who who was in? Um, who were the ones who were um doing the old tracking and old planning? Did did you guys ever assign those? Nope. Nope. Oh, unfortunate. We, we, it's very clear though that it's something we have to do. Mm. It's since it's been put in our brain. <laughs> yeah, it's becoming obvious. Yeah. All right. So, um, is that something that I I think last time, if I remember correctly, Kaliwag was the one yeah. who was doing the old tracking, right? Yep. Um, so I guess I don't think that it's. I mean, I think personally that it's a pretty good skill to get into. Um. Yeah. Especially like um. It, being a support player a lot of the times you you guys um are the ones that teams look to when it comes to that type of stuff like usually t uh, like how how i found find it works in most um team con like a whatever in most teams settings is that the main tank will be the one uh ult planning and the main support which would be like the lucio mercy brig player would be doing the Alt tracking, though that is very, pretty flexible. I'd probably say the second, like if you're the second other, like the other alt tracker would probably be the other support. Um, mm -hmm. And then from there, sometimes it's a DPS. You, usually it's never the off tank. Um, for some reason, off tanks don't like to <laughs> make very many comms. Um, and then, yeah, that that's usually how it works. So I that's just, you know, up to you. Like, I, I think we, we went over it before, but, you know, if the... Yeah. But that that just be an idea to, to for something to work on, and that that would be good for like if you ever join another team, if and they're looking for that, or if you're just doing it in a comp setting, that can be sometimes a good um, little booster. But then again, you know, uh, I don't know. Do you, do you talk much in comp? I know that a lot of females decide not to do that for very obvious I, reasons. I try. I usually lately I haven't been, so I'm not oh. getting any practice there. Mm -hmm. But um, I've been trying to do it here with the team, but the comms are so cluttered and mm -hmm. Kaliwag and Tox uh, tend to just do all the tracking, all the talking. So, mm -hmm. which, it's, but I'm going to work on it. I'll work on mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. Which, when it comes to clutter comms, like it, it just kind of mm -hmm. comes down to. Everyone needs to know. It, it comes to basically the comm roles, and everyone needs to know what their job is, right? If, if people don't know what the job is, then they they're gonna start talking over each other. It you need mm -hmm. to basically say, um, so this person's in charge of old tracking. This person's in charge of old planning. If you guys are talking while they're talking, it better be important. Otherwise, you're you're the problem, right? Right. Um, if somebody is if, like if we're in between a fight and they're trying to old track and Kali's trying to old track. And you have somebody else chit chatting or talking about the last fight or um, talking, even if it's just something like you know, like kind of low to medium importance, like saying, um, I don't know, like just saying like Zarya's, you know, walking back from spawn or something like that. I don't know, like you know, something something like not super high importance. That's cluttering comms, and therefore they shouldn't be I saying see. it. Right? And we just want to make sure that, that like basically everyone's silent, unless it's super important. Like for example we're ult tracking right now and then somebody's like tracers on left right you just like you just sneak it on real quick just it's just everyone knows okay. tracers on left but you'd keep it real quick you'd keep it simple if you're trying to push tracer you'd say like if if let's say they're super far out of position let's say this was like um a mccree or something and he just can't get away real quick and, uh, and you'd be like mccree on left quick 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 go get him right 
something like that. But if it's not important, they shouldn't be saying it. Got it. All right. That's a good one. Reloading. Yeah. All right. A little too early. So when we want to be uh. using our, our window is when they can't run away from it. So this is the same way you'd use like a high noon, but I guess we'll, we'll just, I won't compare it to that since you don't play McCree. Um, that wouldn't make very much sense. But basically, right here, what's gonna, if they haven't, they're not around the corner, right? So they're they're all around cover. What are they gonna do if they hear our ult or they see our ult? They're gonna run in another direction. Right, or they just, they're already in that other direction and they're just not gonna peek it, right? They're just not gonna right. turn the corner. And this means it does literally nothing. So let's see here. Do, if they do peek it, then that's their fault, and that's just an example of a mistake not being punished. But we're gonna—I I would imagine the, here that they're just not gonna peek it, All right? So we use it. Okay, and for some reason they do peek it, right? So they do—they do walk in and engage. But um, in that situation, they could have very, very easily, especially the higher up in ranks, you go—they probably just say that these windows just waited out a second, right? They just wait ten, a couple seconds, wait for it to go away, and then that's just a wasted ult, right? Um, so in that instance, you probably want to give it an extra second or two um mm -hmm. and, until you see that they've walked out right so what, what happens if right now as zarya is walking out here um what would happen if you windowed right now where would zarya go what's that sorry so it, yeah if we used our ult right now this instant right as zarya's uh -huh. walking through let's let's say we ignore like it would have to come here. out at some point they would have to come out or we're sorry, where, where would Zarya go if we if we ulted here? She's in the little little room, I believe, or behind the corner. Yeah, so I she so she would walk right side, right, maybe, yeah. and then that that would split her from our team, and it'd mean that we could push yeah. her very easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even in like we could pro possibly even kill the McCree or the Zarya in this time because they're actually out in the open this time, right? So just we like or if we use it like right now, right? This instant, right, where McCree and right. Anna are on the open. Right. So just keep in mind that this is more so the timing that you'd look to use for it is right. when they're out in the open here, when they can't get away from it, rather than when they're already behind cover. Now, let's see, we're right. we're in the fight here. Again, I think we're we're using our lamp almost immediately. Keep in mind that all right, so we're, we're using, I think this is fine because we actually use it to keep ourselves alive, but we, because um, we're at 30 HP, but we kind of lost track of the monkey there. So we want to make sure we're just aware of the monkey and paying attention to him because yeah. rem remember that they are still on a dive comp, or at least uh, the, I'd probably say they're, they're less of a dive now, but they're they're kind of on a pseudo dive comp where like they have a monkey and Tracy were diving and then the Zarya can bubble the monkey in. So this is what you call like a double bubble comp. Um, so we just want to be careful of that and making sure we're still paying attention to them. Should I have put the emo in the middle? I tried to put it in the corner so they couldn't um, get it, but I felt like it was a little out of position. Uh, in the middle of like right here. This yeah. Area. Um, no, I mean look look at the range that it gives you. Most of the time right. you're covering most of the point with it. You can kind of see okay. the range that we get out of it, right? That was a good spot actually, right? Mm -hmm. Look look how much I cover. That covers five mm -hmm. members of your team, right? Well, it's the true. only the only player who doesn't get that is the is the Sigma, right? Yeah. So that that's 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 actually a good play the best placement that you've had out of the three that you've thrown, All right? It's what just, about the really, position of the window? Do you is that I think like that's too far forward. Um, I probably say the fact that the the monkey cuts you off makes it too far forwards. But okay. um, like for example, if uh, I I think it was just maybe it was a little too. It's hard to say because the the monkey dove in right after we windowed, and it also was a little bit of a mistiming. Um, mm -hmm. If we used it after Monkey had dove in, then we could use it to destroy the the bubble, right, and and whatnot. So, like for example, here I probably say um, it's a it, the fact that the Monkey bubble is here means that it is a little bit too far forwards because now the only person who could shoot through it is us and in Junkrat, and we're and nobody else is like we're not even we we can't peek and Junkrat's not shooting at these guys, right? So the window just becomes useless because the mon Monkey basically creates enough pressure to where it's useless right yeah. so if we're trying to if we had used it in slightly better timing we could potentially just place it um like right in front of our team and then that allows them everyone to shoot through the through it and into the bubble right um and maybe even at the monkey so that or we could use it after the monkey's gone and out of the way that's also an option um but it's just slightly i think that more so it's the timing here that ruins it rather than necessarily the positioning if if they, I think the positioning is fine if Monkey wasn't there, but it was, I think it was the timing kind of messed it up. All right. 
and then we were kind of out of position as well, and then that we didn't have a crouch charged up, we forgot about the monkey, and then we died, and we were forced to use lamp, whereas we probably didn't need to use lamp if we were paying attention to the dive. All right. So again, us dying pretty much first thing, gonna be a big, big no-no, right? Because we're putting our team at a big disadvantage. All right. Might want to go like Lucio on the stalls, like just to get out fast and get there, especially like if you don't have your ult. And the other thing, you have two different types of stall characters. You have um, tanky stall characters and you have fast stall characters. When you see that you have to touch point at a fast pacing, so let's say like we see that our whole team's gonna, you want to go on tanky characters when you see that you have when you have, when you have time to get out there, and you have teammates out there. When you see that you have no teammates out there, if uh, if we're going on a tanky character, we're actually not gonna not gonna have much success. So here we see our whole team's dead. And we're on Baptiste. Yeah. Baptiste would be a tanky character. Lucio would be a fast character, right? Yep. Um, us coming out here on Baptiste means that if we're using Immortality, we have nothing to get it on. We're actually not going to be able to touch point because they're just going to boop us off and kill us, right? So we're going to we're going to try to walk through, and they're just going to stun us and boop and kill yeah. us, right? So in this instance, a fast character would have been better because here, if we're on Lucio, we probably could have been able to touch, right? We probably would have been able to stall our time. Now, let's say we 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 were doing the same thing, but we we did this when we had a bunch of people on point. Well, now. They're not able to just focus us down, and we can just toss in a lamp and keep them alive longer, and Baptiste becomes a much better pick because it's a diff different situation. So it's situational on which one you want to be on here. All right, so quick strengths and weaknesses, right? Same as Oli, always. Um, I've only seen one ult so far. I'd like to see more of them, but um, at like I think you said that you don't think that you're very confident in them, but so far mm -hmm. that one looked like it was just uh, maybe the medium category that needed to be worked on. Um, lamps, um, I probably say, and maybe a little bit sh of shifts as well, looking like those need a little bit of work as well. So that probably I probably probably put that a little bit above our ult usage at the moment, um, just mm -hmm. slightly above them. Um, probably say the biggest thing i'm looking at is um i don't even know what category i'd put this in but our uh, basically like our response to the dive it's kind of a mix between our positioning our awareness and our ability usage because we're up against the dive comp we need to identify they're on a dive comp we need to identify we're probably going to get dove like right i'm probably going to be a dive target right and therefore, we need to position a little bit differently because a, a lot of times here, we're maybe not in the best spot. Like, for example, like we talked about before, we want to position to where we have a high ground to use. We're not charging up crouches. And therefore, when we get dove by monkey, we have nowhere to go, right? And that means that we end up dying both times we've been dove by monkey, right? And then that set means that our death has been a big impact point here because us dying and, and going out first has lost us both of these fights for the most part, right? That was our impact on losing. Um, and that's kind of coming from our response to the dive. And then we also just didn't pay attention to the monkey in that last fight and that got us killed. So that, I don't even know what the heck I would call that, but maybe <laughs> like, um, like if you understand what I'm saying there, it's like kind of mm -hmm. our response to the dive, it lost us kind of two fights in a row and killed us two fights in a row and meant that we weren't getting as much impact as we could. So just make sure we're understanding our uh, our approach to the to dive comp a little bit better and how we should be playing yeah. BAP against the dive comp a little bit better. Um, now, moving on, right? Um, mechanics, don't see too much of a problem besides just make sure we're not hitting, trying to hit shots, you know, directly. Um, probably say that it's all that's on the lower end of things, so still a little bit of consistency to get work to work on, right? Um, and then I maybe even mixed in with mechanics, we'd work or we'd talk about um, make sure you're not overhealing. So maybe if we're talking about that as well, and then maybe adding in reloads too, that goes up a little bit more slightly, though I'd still probably put that a little bit below our alt usage. Um, and then Moving on to awareness, I'd probably say awareness is one that's that needs a little bit of work right now because that awareness of compositions and how we're playing against different compositions, awareness of the monkey diving in on us, right? Awareness of you know where's the enemy team at so that we're not ulting when they're around the corner, right? Um, so like just a bunch of different awareness things, and then awareness of health bars to stop us from overhealing, awareness of 
health bars and how much danger are we in our team in so we're not wasting immortality fields right so awareness is actually seeming like that's what if i'm like now that i'm saying that out loud awareness mm -hmm. is seeming like one that's is looking pretty big at the moment probably topping yeah. the charts and then positioning honestly isn't too i, I honestly i'd probably say positioning's do it looking like one of the better things so far here mm -hmm. i'd probably say that's the lowest and the only thing really i'd say with positioning is just like on the, on the first point just make sure we were with like you know sticking with our team not running off on our own and then look to position next to a high ground so we can jump up to a high ground and then that is pretty much okay. it nothing really else um with our mm -hmm. positioning so that's where we're standing and then it looks like we're about to lose the round um never look to run on the point and contest it if you have other people contesting right um okay as a support right i i feel like that's something we talked about but maybe not but here we have a diva contesting and um or at least she should be contesting. I think she got like booped off, but like we still have a couple seconds where she could get on. Um, the only time we're trying to touch as a support is at the very, very last second if it's absolutely needed. So if it's like a second away from capping and we see nobody else can touch, um, then we're going to go and touch. But other than that, um, us sitting off of point keeps both of us alive longer. If we sit in the back here, right and sit back here and, and heal diva up now we stay alive because we're not running in on point and dying and because we stay alive we can heal diva and pocket her and keep her life longer and then after diva dies then we can run in on point and then now we've lasted longer now if we die instantly then we can't heal diva right we die first here we can't heal diva and then diva dies pretty much instantly after us so it's just it's just let's efficient if we're doing it like that and then Pay attention to the fact that like we never really even needed to touch because we have Diva and Ball on point, right? Who mm -hmm. are touching. So that's just again a little bit of stall tips of how we can look to stall yeah, a little that's better. Yeah, good one. Because I I do struggle with that. Just when feeling like not knowing when. See now I use Lucio, but mm. too late. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we swap over to the Mercy. And have we gone over Mercy yet before? No, we haven't. And I forgot no. I did Mercy here are you wanting to go over mercy or would you prefer to go over a different character uh no we can do we can continue i'm curious to right. hear what you think okay so we have a widow in an ash you'd probably be slightly better off pocketing the ash though she did get nerfed for that Okay. Um. Let me get you patched up. I get the idea. Okay. Already, I'm noticing a ton of overhealing, so we'll just go yeah. through and, and 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 count it out real quick because, um. It, this is just so far throughout the entire game it's been a thing and right? we just want to be very very careful so we'll just count out how many seconds of essentially time that we're basically when you're overhealing you're doing literally nothing right it's just wasted yep. time where you're not accomplishing a single thing so let's just kind of count out this fight how much we're overhealing so we come into the fight right this is i get this is the poke phase of the fight so it's like technically this is the the, the fight hasn't started yet but the i'm going to count this as part of the fight here just for the sake of the, the argument right so we go through we're, we're starting here and we swap over to healing okay so one two three four mississippi all right so continuing the fl little flicker there on it. Five Mississippi, right, if we're, if we're counting with those flickers. Mm -hmm. And then we, here we have six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, right? Oh. So. Yeah. Nine Mississippi. All right, so now now this is be two different fights, but you can just see how, how it's it's pretty frequent. We just want to make sure we're not we're not doing that because that really really adds up like over the course of like a of a ten minute game, right? If we're if it's like let, let's just say it's like roughly ten seconds per fight, and then that's you know uh, roughly two fights per minute in ten games. That's twenty fights, right? So like it's ten times twenty, um, two hundred means that we're overhealing for roughly three minutes, right? At that rate, 
Um, now that's 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 just working with very very rough numbers, but you can see it, it, it adds up a lot, right? If we're doing it if we're doing it that consistently, and so far it has looked pretty consistent across a lot of different characters here. So we just want to yeah. look to get out of the habit because it's wasting a lot of time where we could be doing other things. Yeah, on my mercy settings, I when I go to damage, I have to intentionally unclick it or click uh, mm. M1 to get it off. So and then toggle? Some, yeah, when I toggle, and sometimes I think I toggled right-click, but I don't. So I might mm. look at my settings too. Right. Are you, like, uh, just maybe turn it off of toggle or what? Yeah, maybe turn it off of toggle mm. so it's, like, live action, uh, you know, like what I'm really yeah. doing. But mm. in general, I have an overhealing problem, I know. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I see it. So then that that comes in on making sure we're really, really paying attention to the health bars and awareness. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. I didn't realize what an issue this was, really. Overhealing when he's purple, purple, right? What should one do, like, if the Winston is purple but is low health? Like, should I just be damaging, damage boosting him? Yeah, so you are completely fine to heal him, but... Only at the like last second. So I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think Nade lasts four seconds or something of the like. Yeah. Um, when he gets purpled, if you're just on healing the entire time, that's doing nothing for four seconds, right? But if, for example, you go and dam you could damage use him if he's on top of somebody, but you could also just go and do something else and on somebody else, right? You could go to the ash for three seconds and then come back to him for the last second or the last half a second so that you're just getting the healing on him as fast as possible as soon as he comes out of the purple right but you don't want to be with, with him the entire extent of it because then that's just wasting time okay um here we're, we tend to be we're, it looks like we're looking down a lot you're gonna notice that you know that just lowers on top of that being bad crosshair placement practice it also lowers our awareness because it means that we're, when we're kind of staring at the floor we tend to like not have bit as good uh awareness of like high grounds of people around us we kind of we can't see as much on high grounds like when we were walking through we were kind of looking like this and notice how you can't really see anything up top on the high ground there but if we're looking like this and normally now we can see the high grounds right so we give more visibility of our surroundings on top of that just make sure that you're not staring at the people you're trying to heal as a lot of the times it seems like we're kind of staring at our team here when we probably should be looking around that you know where's the enemy team at who do i have to dodge where you know, what's happening around me um whereas yeah. a lot of the time it seems like we're staring at the thing we're healing at which we don't need to do because you can see you could be healing ash here and looking this direction and still be healing ash right um and you can be looking at her health bar with the right underneath your crosshair, so you do not need to be seeing her at all. Therefore, True. make sure we're looking around us more often, right? Whereas most of the time here, let's let's kind of go through this next fight and see if this comes up again. Oh, actually, maybe we're swapping over characters. Oh fuck! Oh, I said the bad word. Sorry, you can edit that. I'm so sorry. I ch I I never play Lucio, and they asked me to play Lucio. I'm like, oh my gosh, really? You want? Okay. Good All luck, right. everybody. <laughs> is is unholy more of the Lucio player? Yes. Yeah, and you guys guys kind of got caught on different roles. D d does unholy yeah. not not play Mercy? No, she plays Mercy. That's her like main character. It was this oh, was a what? bit of a. So wait, I'm why was why were you on Mercy and her on Anna? Because she wanted to play Anna. Oh, all right. Okay. Sounds, yeah. Sounds yeah. good. <laughs> it was a mess. Um, are you wanting to go over Lucio, or you want to just skip over this? <laughs> uh, no, we can continue. Might as well just kind of go right. with it. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. So we come out of spawn here. All right. Go back. All right. So here we kind of run into them in a moment. So mm -hmm. we're, we 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 get dove in. This is fine. Everything looks fine fine right now so far. And then we kind of run straight at them. And then we we just make sure we're not running straight at the enemy team. Remember that we are a support, and we're not gonna be able to survive doing that. And then we get to 24 HP. Right? We saw that we took a bunch of damage when we went, in, and look what we do again here in a moment. <laughs> oh yeah, right? I did that. That's right. Yep. So we want to make sure we're paying attention to our health, paying attention to where the uh -huh. enemy team is. 
Uh, most of the time, you're not going to want to run straight at the enemy team. Right? That's not going to be an effective strategy most of the time. Right? You're not, you're not going to want to do that. So just make sure we're being a little bit more aware of our surroundings and we're not inting into them. It'd be completely fine there if we just stuck, stuck on, the, on the wall with our team. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how comfortable are you with your wall riding? Decent. I don't play enough, but I mm. I like wall riding. All right. I would like to get better with Lucio for sure. All right. Um, why don't we just do some wall riding training though? The, okay. So we're at nine nine minutes That's then. Cool. Um, so on Lucio, so some pretty basic um, wall riding just how it works and how you want to approach it and then from the from there it's just you, it's all up to you for practice and whatnot but basically on lucio how you wall ride is you're going to you have a couple of different steps here first off you're going to spam your jump button right we're, ne we're never going to hold it down we're just going to spam it the entire time right so we're just constantly basically constantly jumping while we're on the wall this is going to allow us to move so that we're not getting stuck on stuff instead we're going to kind of be moving around um constantly and jumping from one thing to another um so we're never really like sometimes we can hold it down like if we, have, if we see that we have a long stretch of space but other than that most of the time we're we're just spamming the button right okay um if you play lucio frequently enough then i, I might recommend chasing changing off your mouth uh your jump uh blah, blah, changing your jump off of space bar as that could lead to, uh, that back when i had that that hurt my thumb a lot and uh -huh. I, I actually have it on my right click now um for jump oh. but um that's that only only you only need to do that if you play them frequently but in any case um on to the next step right is you're not pressing any other button besides w all right so you're not pressing left you're not pressing right you're not pressing i guess sometimes you can press back usually you're not gonna press backwards when you're when you're doing that right but you're pressing only w and we're spamming jump. So what that looks that what that means is instead we're aiming around with our camera. So when we're trying to go somewhere, we're looking in that direction, right? So when we're trying to go, uh, go up here, we're looking up. Keep in mind that as well that you're going to be gaining more height if you are looking up, and you're actually going to descend faster if you're looking down. So if we're trying to get low here, we're going to look down, and we're trying to get high here, we're looking up, right? And then besides that, we're just pressing W, spamming right click, and looking where we're wanting to go, right? Basically parallel to where we're trying to go. So for like any any objects we're going on, we're looking to the side of it. So we're trying to go on this, we're looking straight forwards. This, we're looking straight forwards, right? So we're just looking to the parallel to the things we're going on. And then that's how, oh, off the map. And then that's how, like, I kind of got, it didn't let me go in the corner there. Um, that's how Lucio's wall riding works and how you can look to get really good on it right is by kind of following those rules with it and you can move around really really fast and speedily if you're doing that and do some really cool things if you're if you're respecting those kind of rules with it a lot of the people i i honestly didn't know that until like i saw like red shell do um uh -huh. do like a twitter twitter video on that on, on how that works and it honestly is super helpful and on and like me learning how to wall ride around the lucio so there's looking um just kind of go knowing that you're going in the direction that you're looking and then what did you say about parallel yeah so just you, you in the, when it comes to where your camera should be facing you want to be looking parallel to the, to the things you're trying to go on so here um, if, if we're if we're trying to go along this wall here we're looking parallel to it right wow. while we're while we're while riding through right if we're looking to the side like we can like if i can hold, do this to the side kind of like not too well right it's not it's just not going to be as effective like i can do this a little bit but i also have to, when i do that i actually have to hold down my side buttons if i'm trying to so like like right now if, I, if i'm doing that i'm holding down my um i'm actually holding down my, my left button my my s here or sorry my a um and then now i'm holding down my d so i can actually stay on the left wall otherwise i just be going straight forwards All right so it's, right. it's a little bit more complicated usually you're just gonna do this um and then that's gonna allow you to get through real easily all right so um that's probably huge yep that's a big one that's awesome thank you so much because i do have to speed people speed out sometimes and uh, yeah you saw what happened <laughs> all right so we're like in the last nine minutes or something like that mm -hmm. all right so we died here skip back Right. 
Notice how we're not really looking at anything in particular. So this mm -hmm. is a, a, this is kind of low awareness, right? Just make sure that when we're coming in, we're looking. You know, we're we're coming in. We're looking at top left high ground. We're looking left side. We're scanning the high grounds. We're mm -hmm. looking top right. There's a, so many different places people could be here. They could be right here. They could be right here. They could be up there. They could be in there. Mm -hmm. They could be over here. They could be over here. They could be up there. They could be up there. Right? They could be around this corner. Right? They could even be up top right behind you, right? And there's three people up top right there. But when we walk in, look at where our camera angle is. From our perspective, we cannot see top left high ground. We cannot see top right high ground. We can only see straight in front of us. And we walk in, we kind of do a slow pan. We look left side, that's it, right? We don't look top right. We don't look top left. We don't check right corner, right? And then we kind of do a slow turn around here where we look top a little bit and then we don't look up top behind us, right? It's just a very slow pan where we're just like kind of slowly turning around, not really turning real quickly. But whereas what we should be doing is while we're walking in, the first thing we're doing is while we're walking in, we're checking top left and top right right here. That way we don't have to check it once we walk in. We walk in, we check left side, right? We check top left, we check bottom left, we check top right, we check bottom left, we check bottom right, right? Um, we just kind of, that's what you call sweeping, right? We're, we're just kind of, we're looking at every single different angle, right? We're sweet, we're kind of checking them and making sure no one's there. We're sweeping with our eyes. We're, we're making sure no one's there and moving on if there's nothing there. If there is somebody there, then we focus on it, right? Um, but there, we don't really look around, and that just lowered awareness again. Nope, at least you're not running into it. We kind of walked forwards a little bit there. And then, besides that, not much you could have done after you walked into the grab. Both times, there's two instances where I just walked right into things. Yep. We just want to make sure that we're, you know, we're, we're paying attention to the grav, and we're as soon as we see it, we're backing up, not walking forwards into it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. So here, where's the enemy team at? Yeah. All right. Um. So what it what is amp speed used for here? Why why is it useful? I guess so. They, they actually do have mm -hmm. two people in spawn. So actually, I'm, I'm going to take this back because I mm -hmm. didn't realize that they had two people in spawn. But it, it let's say that they had all people here. You might mm -hmm. not want to amp this early um, because oh, in this situation, you, you basically you want the amp for when you're going to be taking the most damage because um, the faster you're moving, the less damage you're taking, right? Because if we move, th this is like the, the right here is the area where we're taking the most damage because it's out in the open and we're walking through the choke. But if we move from point A to point B, fast and efficiently then we're taking a lot less damage because we're you know getting to cover faster but here we kind of mm -hmm. amp early which i think is actually fine because they're down two people um but i just didn't i didn't realize that beforehand we could have maybe waited an extra second with it because notice the amp runs out by the time we're actually in the high damage spot mm -hmm. yeah okay. um keep in mind that lucio usually i mean this is getting a little bit more complex and i know that you don't play lucio but um, Lucio isn't just as kind of a speed bot for his team. He can do go doing things. Uh, for example, he can dual characters and he can get people, especially when they are out of position and especially when they are low HP. Right? He can. He essentially Lucio is an opportunist. When he sees an opportunity, he goes and does something. So um, that means that when there's somebody who's out of position, somebody's low, he can go and kill them. Now, right here. There's somebody who's out of position and somebody that we can go and kill. And I'm going to see if we can, if we can kind of spot this as we're walking through. Um, what is what is maybe something that like that we could be doing on the, right now? Going high ground and um, getting this pe the people off high ground. Mm -hmm. Who spe who specifically and how would we do that? Oh, Anna. Yep. Just uh, just go up and like bully her a little bit into that room or try to kill her. Or potentially boop her into your team, right? Ah, uh, just mm -hmm. just just go up top left here, get into the corner, go doop boop, and then now you go on 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 pointing, right? Um, just that's great. Really, like just opens it, like you know that's a super easy kill because you're out of good positioning. Pretty much, it's just an instant kill for her as long as her team's paying attention and we're calling it out, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we could potentially just duel her, but that would probably take a little bit longer. Uh, to do whereas this is a perfect bo boop opportunity now if she was further back here let's say like she saw you coming and she backed up then that that opportunity has gone and you can look to duel her but if she's just standing next to the edge just go and do that right mm -hmm. mccree and zarya beaming us and shooting us from behind we don't seem to hear this and notice or react to it at all 
uh, and or at least the reaction is pretty slow. McCree actually shot pretty much like an entire clip before we reacted. Yeah. All right. Uh, wall writing there seems a little bit rough, and but again, we'll yeah. we'll, pra we'll practice at that, right? You don't play Lucio too much. Also, I forgot that we're we have to do the wrap up at the end here. So oh, okay. running out of time. So we'll go, yeah. we'll get back to that. So, um, main points and wrap up. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Baptiste to start off. Shift, make sure that we're using it. Oh, for some reason, my dot's missing in the middle of my screen there. Um, shift, make sure that we're using it um, when our team is low health and we're bursting them up or when we need healing, right? Not when they're not needed, but again, it's not a super important ability. Um, when it comes to our um, immortality field usage, we have a bunch of things here, right? This one need, need a little bit of work. First off, make sure it's going behind walls and corners right rather than just putting it out in the open we want to put it around something like this um mm -hmm. are you aware of the fact that it, it travels with the same projectile as your right click does i have heard that yes yep. so that's just a, that's if you're trying to throw a long range one that actually is going to be pretty useful to land um so just we want to make sure it's behind cover but the other thing with it was a lot of timing as a lot of the, two out of the three that I saw us use, we used um, too early, um, and then the third one we only we only were forced to use it because we were in bad positioning, or at least we didn't use our other ability right. So we want to make sure that we're um, using it when we actually see people are in danger, right, and low health and about to die. That's when we're using it both times. You kind of use it too early, so just pay attention to when it's actually needed. Think about spots ahead of time of where it's going to be needed. Shift usage, right. Look to use it to get to high grounds, but when you're, um, you know, when you're up against a dive, don't take the high ground initially, because then you just put your isolate yourself, and then you have nowhere to go next. But if mm -hmm. you're you put yourself with your team, and they dive in, you can just have a charge crouched up, like ready up, right, and then just leap out of the way as soon as they dive in, and then now they're stuck down there, and you're up here, and you're completely safe, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then you can just do that rinse and repeat. Um, and whenever you need to, do it with different high grounds anywhere you want to do it, right? We could do it up there, we could do it over here, we could potentially do it, like, for, even if we're on a high ground, that, that might actually be a really good idea. So, like, for example, like, we could actually take this high ground, and like, since we have a double high ground here, and we could charge this up, and if they jump at us, we can just jump up around this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's just ideas to use with it, make sure we're using it, because that got us killed a couple times just because we weren't mm -hmm. kind of using that, um, right? Besides that, uh, uh ultimate... I only saw us use one bat bolt, but and I, I think one ult in total. We didn't use any other ults. We, we used one ult right. that game, so I, I don't have much to talk about ults this time, but just make sure that we're okay. using when people are out in the open, right? Not when they're in that room over here, but when they're both out in the open here when they can't run away from me, right? Um, on top of that, just make sure that we're using it as close to our team as possible. We don't want to put it too far forwards because that could result in it um, being too far away and then getting like shield off or they could push through it. So you just want to place it right in front of your team. Um, and then besides that, moving on, mechanics, not too much of an issue to talk about. We did really good on that. Um, for the most part, actually, sorry, let me rephrase that. I forgot. So general mechanics, doing fine. But uh, there's a bunch of other tiny, t kind of smaller areas we need to look at. So first off, overhealing. Happened quite a bit. Really look yeah. to work on it because it does add up over time. And it means that you're m missing out on minutes and minutes and minutes of gameplay per game. Um, so we really, really want to concentrate on that. And then besides that, make sure that we are re properly reloading. I don't even know. I'll put it in the shooting category, I guess. Like, so we'll put that in mechanics. Just make sure we're reloading. And like whenever nobody needs healing and we're not doing anything in particular, anytime we have a lull in a fight, we're reloading. So we actually have ammo for when we do need it. Um, on top of that, make sure we're shooting a little bit more as we're a lot of time we're just healing too much. So look to just shoot more often whenever healing's not needed. And then that, I think, is it. Qu question mark. Maybe yeah. we'll come back to it. Um, okay. Then on from there, on to positioning. Make sure that we are... Positioning, honestly, wasn't too bad. Just make sure positioning next to high ground. Um, and then Lucio and Mercy, I didn't see anything differently either. So positioning, not too much to talk about. Awareness, tons to talk about. All right. Um, yeah. First off, HUD awareness. Make sure we're paying attention to our health and therefore not using abilities when we don't need to. Um, and paying attention to the, our teammates' health, right? And paying attention to... The, their health bar, so we're not overhealing, so that we can shoot when we don't need, when we shoot and reload when they're, you know, when they're full HP, right? And we're not, and we really, really want to pay attention to that because that results in a whole lot of problems. Make sure that we are paying attention to where is the enemy team positioned, where is our team positioned, because again, that led to problems with our ult usage, that led to problems with us um, 
maybe not paying attention to Monkey when he dove us, and then that resulted in us dying. Right, so pay attention to where's my team at, where's the enemy team at. On top of that, pay attention to compositions, right? Different compositions change how we're playing. When they're on a dive, we're playing completely different than when they're on a spam. So keep in mind what comp they're on and adjust accordingly. And then I think... And then pay attention to team health bars so we can land immortalities better. Um, pay a attention... Lot. Yeah, I, I think I I think that that is maybe it, but you know there there might be some other, but definitely probably yeah. were other things that I mentioned along the way. Um, but that's ma the main points. I don't think we struggled with with watching kill feed. That one was good, and yeah, we'll m move on now. So th mm -hmm. that was a lot of the main points. Lucio, we just went over all his mm -hmm. wall riding stuff. Um, you know, press ho just hold W. Spam right or spam your jump button and look around with your camera. Um, besides that, we didn't talk about really anything else with Lucio. And then Mercy, mm -hmm. we just talked about overhealing, and then we pretty much swapped off instantly. Um, yeah. And then yeah, that's pretty much it. So main yeah. point, main points. Um, probably say awareness was the number one thing there. Um, and then because of that awareness, I kind of fed into it. So I'd probably say awareness is number one. Number two is kind of like, are we, uh, I'll put it, this is like a kind of the weird category. I don't usually, this is probably the first time I've ever included it in mm -hmm. something. It's just like kind of our reaction to dive, how we're, our, our play style against dive, right? And just making sure we're, mm -hmm. we're doing that because that kind of led to a lot of lost fights there just because we were approaching our play style to dive incorrectly um, and we weren't changing it against a dive. Um, and then on from there, we're going to put um ability usage next um and then mechanics comes in, in after i'm trying to think so um we'll, we'll yeah we'll put ability usage next at number three we'll mm -hmm. put mechanics as number four um but as i honestly those two are pretty close and mm -hmm. then number and then finally Number five is coming in. Honestly, like just a ultimate usage and yeah, ultimate usage is coming in at number five, and then positioning just is a, is like you know not really. Honestly, looking pretty great on it. Not not much to work okay. on it. So I, honestly, I won't even include it as a category. So that, mm -hmm. those are the five. All right. Any questions okay. on anything we've talked about? Mm -mm. All good. Thank All you right. so much. I no loved it. Problemo. So I'll just.